when you are interviewing for a continuous improvement type of job, of course, there are all those things that you would like to do for a regular job interview, but there's also a couple of specifics that you would be well advised to prepare. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today we'll be talking about a viewer question on now, what would be my tips for prepping for a CI specialist, CI manager type of interview. So if you want to go into continuous improvement, into performance excellence, and you're in a job interview, now, this can be beginning of your career, but it can definitely also be at some stage a bit later in your career. What it comes down to is that you, of course, want to prep the basics, but there's also a number of things specifically to the continuous improvement sphere that I want to be discussing with you. Now, I am not an HR professional. I don't do hundreds of CI interviews. I haven't done hundreds of CI interviews myself either, but I have done my fair share of them and also am in the, involved in the process of keeping and getting CI specialists from within companies, from outside of companies, into the team. So these are my takes on it. A couple of the basic things that just go for any job interview, you, you need to keep them in mind, right? Get in there, be on, be on time, uh, present yourself in a nice way, have your documentation prepared, send it in advance, dress, uh, slightly overdress, things like that, and know that you have the required skills and that you openly discuss it. And th there will be your general questions like, what's your background? They're not interested in a complete life story, right? So the highlights that are relevant to the job. When they ask for work experience, the same, right? It goes about how did you improve things? Uh, why do you want to be in continuous improvement as opposed to you know, operations or maybe technical engineering or things like that? So what draws you to this job? What draws you to the company? So make sure that you've researched the company a little bit to be a nice person, but also show that you have prepared and that you have some, the right attitude to work in their team. But this is for any job, right? Now, Sort of the specifics, the first specific is kind of an open door as well, but share your experience within continuous improvement. Now, you would do this for any job interview, right? The experience you have in that field. But talk about it a bit. What teams have you done? What projects have you run? If you are early in your career, it might be limited to what did you do during your studies? But focus also on what were the, uh, the learnings or oh, maybe the difficult parts that you saw, what were the fun parts that you saw, which things came easy to you. So don't only talk about the learnings of, oh, I did this wrong and then uh, now, now I know how to do it better, or now, uh, now I know I don't like to discuss with people. Those are good learnings. And you might want to talk about them a bit, although that you're not good with people, tone it down. I also, I'm quite sure that you are just overjudging yourself. But also talk about which parts come easily to you. Which parts of those projects that you really enjoy? And don't forget the results. People hiring, continuous improvement specialists, TPM managers, performance excellence coordinators, they want results. So if you are at that specialist level, they want to know that you can run improvements, that you know, analyze the problem correctly, find solutions, and then also standardize it and make sure that you get improved performance that also stays improved. And that you focus on that, you check it for a couple of months after the project is finished to make sure that everything is improved and stays improved. Talk about how you changed a team to work with the new standards. Now, if you are interviewing more for a manager or coordinator role, those experiences are still important. So have one or two examples that you offer freely and maybe one or two extra that you have prepared. But in these roles, your hiring manager will also really want to know if you can lead a team of CI specialists and project people that are drawn in from the organization. Can you lead the improvement roadmap and getting your TPM pillars, your improvement teams, your Kaizen events all lined up and you know prepped, done correctly, and showing those results? So the whole pipeline of analyzing and improving and sustaining, can you organize all of that? Can you draw the best ideas and the best work from groups of people, including especially those that you do not have hierarchical control over? That is an important part in the CI sort of mindset. Uh, and that comes mainly also in that last point that I will go for, but you don't have hierarchical control over most of the people in your team because they're just drawn in for 
you know, a one week or a four month project, but then they basically go to their normal jobs again. This is very typical in continuous improvement work, especially if you are that manager or coordinator. Now, also quite an important part when we're thinking about this performance excellence, continuous improvement types of roles, all of them, is to sort of balance your flexibility and challenging the organization. So you have shared your experience. So you really know TPM and you have a good understanding of what the basic pillars should be like, who should be in charge, and what specific improvement routes they should follow. You've got good knowledge, good experience of that from another factory, and you know that this company will benefit from it. Now, when you notice, and you should have done a bit of research already before, but when you notice that actually the people in this company, they want to follow more of a lean approach, and they, don't, they definitely don't like pillars, uh, because they had some bad experience with it in the past, uh, but they do like a bit of Six Sigma and a bit of lean, have the flexibility there. You want to adapt to their way of continuous improvement. So don't stick to the program you know will work. Because, and this is not just going along with that company, no, because, and share this with your um, hiring manager, it is much more important to create a continuous and stable improvement culture in their business. So when they ask you about your experience, but also what type of programs you would roll out, counter ask what is currently already in place, which directions have already been communicated, because you want to continue also down that path. But the, the parts that are working, you want to keep that communication. And you want to show that you're not here to turn the whole company around. You are here to keep everyone in the company going towards that goal of making a better organization. And that requires that you need to be flexible with your tools. And you can share with them that you know, the ideas that we have in the focused improvement pillar, if you are indeed a TPM lover, well, these analyzing and road mapping ideas and this concept of uh, your volume deployment and your labor deployment coming together, that can be really powerful in your organization as well. Let's add that on top of the way we analyze where to put Kaizen events on machine efficiency. Really, right? That type of things. But they do hire you to improve the business. And that does mean that you need to challenge a bit. So especially if you're a bit you know, mid or even somewhat later in your career, you have the experience. They, they also want your opinion and your experience. So ask those questions. That is a general advice in, in any job interview. Ask the questions. If you are in any sort of specialist or definitely managing position, ask about what they're doing and give your opinion on what is your experience, what might work, what might not work, whilst making sure that you tell them, I will first be sucking in what you do. I'll be learning your processes. I will not be changing many things from day one because stability is more important than the one brilliant program that you have done before. But I do hear that maybe your analysis can use a boost. Now, I happen to have those skills. And that's where we get into what type of skills do you require as a continuous improvement specialist or manager? And they are two broad categories. You need to be a good analyst and or a good change manager. Of course, if you are both, great. But know that companies require the both of them and they know that they will not find it usually within the same people. So if you can show that you're just good with the numbers, good with setting up dashboards, with uh, really focusing where the improvements should be, tracking how good the improvements are, um, doing you know, designed experiments that require quite a bit of mathematical understanding, uh, doing all kinds of statistics-based Six Sigma things. If you have that type of mind on you, great. The analyst mindset is very valuable for continuous improvement work. But you also need to get the people in the processes to move, uh, move along, right? They need to adopt new ways of working, new standards. So we need to change the way of working. And for that, we need people who can really affect that change. So if you are a very good project leader, a very good um, influencer of people to move them towards new ways, better ways of working, that's also brilliant. Highlight those two things. Highlight also your experience with analysis and change stuff. If you are early in your career, these ones are still pretty easy to prove. 
and he will probably go for entry positions anyway. So you will get a chance to be in the team and take this role and ask to also experience that role. Learn from the more experienced continuous improvement people to take this on. Share that you're not afraid to do that. You should be an ideal candidate, right? <clears throat> but these two, they are the main things. It is not about your specific knowledge of food law or because you have a, a good uh, mechanical engineering degree that taught you how to take apart complex engines and uh, put them back together again or uh, that you are so good in calculating the correct heat coefficients of the smelting process. These are all very nice skills to have, but these very technical process knowledge skills, they are secondary to just being a good overall analyst and affecting change or being a change manager. So those are the skills that you highlight in your experience and results. And this is the way that you set yourself up right, to be perceived. You want to be a bit of a challenger to the process, but in the way that the organization is already doing. If that organization has a continuous improvement program in place, you will be playing with those rules. If they have a different way to manage teams than your previous company or than what you read in the books, you use their way. You might offer some you know, improvements. You might, once you're inside, discuss maybe we should you know, also ad adopt a couple of different ways to do it. I also learned this way, and you, first you teach your team, and then together you make the decision to go for that or not. But you need to go with the company culture, because especially in CI, but basically in, in all aspects of business, that good cu culture, that way of doing things is also an important asset. If you change everything, every time a new manager comes in, your people will never really adopt a new culture. They will just run with what they know and try to squeeze it in there. So make sure that you have that. I will work with your systems and check where I see improvements and the skills of analyzing and changing. Now, as a sort of a last thought, I will add, this is culturally also dependent. Right? If you work in, um, in a culture, and I, I sort of noticed this most uh, with more the, the Asian uh, people I worked with, that more focus is put on correct theoretical answers and the correct way of doing things. Now, if, you're, if you expect that your manager would like to know that you know the terms of Six Sigma, talk about the voice of the customer versus the voice of the process. Talk about Q, uh, CTQs, uh, critical quality elements. Put those things in, let them know that you have certain degrees, that you have a certain language that you know what the correct steps are. Although even then, I would say let them know that you have that knowledge and that you know how a 5S should be performed and what is a good way to organize it, but be flexible enough to go with the system that is in place. Perhaps ask that manager what is their experience with a number of those systems. Which of those parts of their program are they happy with, which are they not happy with. Right? So feel a bit what is going on during the talk and know that different cultures require slightly different things. My experience is mainly Western European. Uh, so uh, that is the, the culture and then specifically Dutch. Now we Dutch people are quite well known to put it frankly, this is really not accepted uh, in a whole number of different cultures. So do know, I know that now also from experience, but that sauce, so that culture sauce, of course, goes over this. But these points, they will stay the same in any culture. We want to know specifically what experience and results you have for the job you're interviewing in. For continuous improvement, you need the challenge, the processes, the organization, but don't overthrow the whole CI organization, right? Go with their way of implementing, even though there are so many different ways to implement CI. And your main skills will be analytical capability and affecting change. Now, I hope that that helps you to land that great CI job that you want, uh, if it did, or if it at least gave you that extra nudge to go with good confidence into your interview. Don't forget to hit that like button. Also, if you have any more questions on how life as a CI specialist, as a CI manager, CI consultant is, that's what the comment section is for. For now, I wish you the best of luck 
in your career. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy that CI journey.